now we come the second part. So first part, I said normally these cases will be brought to a, a clinical examination. They will be both a low limb short cases, and uh, that's what you're expected. Uh, if you got that um, that uh, standard of uh, knowledge, you you you're likely to pass. And if you're going that scheme of uh, in, in telling uh, conveying to examiner that you understand what you're uh, expected, even if it is simple genovirus or simple intoing. Uh, you're not forgetting the other important causes to mention. So uh, that's what is expected. The next one is a bit more uh, different way of uh, uh, assessing the candidates for, for acute emergency. So uh, we're going through uh, uh, septic arthritis and uh, acute osteomyelitis. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure Apuru would have arranged or they has already talked about, uh, otherwise we'll do it in future about a full talk about chronic osteomyelitis uh, as a separate case. But today is mainly acute uh, osteomyelitis and septic arthritis. I will touch a little bit on uh, just general principle of managing as a complication of acute osteomyelitis, but I'll not go into detail that we will discuss later on as I have not discussed anything rickets today, but that, that we will discuss uh, separately. Same we will discuss uh, dysplasia separately uh, as causing angular deformity. So, and the normal uh, starting or introductory question, we will be uh, saying that this child was just started walking three months ago, happily walking um, about uh, uh, a day or so. Uh, and mom noticed that uh, he's not able to put weight at all. Uh, he is uh, crying. Uh, he's not letting anybody touch uh, his uh, left leg. Uh, and uh, only uh, significant history is that a week ago he has some upper respiratory tract infection which got better with simple uh, paracetamol uh, no other history significant uh, either uh, during uh, before birth or during birth all injection has been given uh, this is the history you got you are the candidate uh, you, you, you are the in charge of this patient how will you manage it? So that will be our introductory question to uh, to candidate. Uh, just I've given the brief history that so that we don't waste time uh, in the exam. Obviously, the and the the uh, immediately as I said, this is MS question, uh, MS exam, not like MBBS exam. We want them to immediately come with top differential diagnosis and then uh, top diagnosis and then differential diagnosis and then uh, then manage all his history physical examination investigation and treatment based on that so uh, he, he will uh, immediately uh, it's absolutely okay if he says that my high priority here given the history is that uh, this could be a, a septic arthritis of the hip joint although i'll have to take again a detailed history from patients and detail his and do a detailed examination and uh, I will immediately at this stage because I quickly want his knowledge to be tested I'll say that's all available in the history rest is all negative his examination I've already told is not letting you touch uh, uh, only thing positive in the examination in a and &E today we measured his temperature was uh, about 102 degrees centigrade uh, what else you want uh, obviously, he will say is, uh, if his temperature is high, his attitude of the leg is in flexion external rotation, uh, abduction, uh, which suggestive uh, of uh, uh, of some uh, fluid in his joint or or a psoas spasm, and uh, with a high temperature, uh, my suspicion of uh, uh, septic arthritis has increased, and I would like uh, to confirm uh, this. Uh, by doing some further tests, so I'll tell. Okay, you uh, you throw the test at me, and I'll give you the result. Uh, so uh, I, I would expect him to say that I would like to do a, a full blood count, an ESR, a CRP, uh, a, a blood culture uh, and, uh, immediately for this patient. And I would say that his full blood count shows significant raised in white cell count of about uh, twenty thousand, mainly polymorph nuclear. His uh, ESR is about 70, his CRP is 60, uh, his blood culture is awaited. Uh, this child has come to you an hour ago in a &E. uh, he's crying, he's got temperature, what do you want to do? Uh, I would expect uh, the candidate at this stage maybe uh, saying that I would like uh, uh, an, an x-ray done and I said, why do you need an x-ray? Uh, what do you expect in the x-ray? 
uh, he would I would like him to say x-rays normally are actually normal but we would like to rule out any uh, any trauma or any serious very rarely some tumor condition it is not for confirmation of the diagnosis very rarely uh, I can see the increased joint space and, uh, and, and, and but normally I would expect that normal but I do need an x-ray to rule out these uh, things uh, I said okay we got an x-ray which is normal uh, and this is all uh, the test you have this is a normal x-ray full blood count ESR CRP I told you blood culture sent he would might say I want ultrasound and normally uh, I'll throw a uh, panel in the wheel and say that actually uh, ultrasound is not available till tomorrow the radiologist is not musculoskeletal radiologist he's not uh, confident to do ultrasound in a child uh, what do you do uh, at this stage because we're pushing him, we want to know him the uh, such the emergency situation. Uh, we would like him to say uh, that I would like this child to take to theater, uh, and we would ask him, uh, "What would you do uh, by taking child to theater?" Uh, normal uh, expectation will be that uh, in under general anesthesia, I'll aspirate uh, his hip joint and proceed. So I will consent both for aspiration and proceed with the wash out of the hip joint uh, and if that answer is given we satisfied if we deviate that no i will wait for ultrasound i will do an mri scan or any fancy investigation and delaying the treatment obviously this candidate is dangerous and he doesn't understand the the the, the pathological destruction of the cartilage a pus can cause by waiting and that will be boundary toward the fail but if if we go this route that uh, uh, even if ultrasound not available, uh, uh, I will take this child to theater. Obviously, if ultrasound is available and showing a lot of fluid, then uh, uh, we will take this. So, uh, we will, uh, at this stage, I would like to discuss with him that uh, uh, we got no ultrasound. We Just on base of this uh, history and examination, how sure you are that this child has got septic arthritis, uh, at this stage, uh, we would like him to quote uh, some evidence and uh, we expect them at this stage to uh, know a little bit about the caucus criteria that this child uh, actually is not walking. He was walking before uh, and it's not just limping, he's not walking. So that's important thing because if child is limping, then it, it's, it, it, is, it, it is not uh, scoring. Then his ESR is more than 40. Uh, nowadays, we can include CRP, uh, both as inflammatory markers, so they are raised. His white cell count is raised, and uh, there is uh, uh, no child is not allowing any movement. Uh, so he's got very high criteria for suspicion of septic arthritis, and because of this caucus criteria, which has been uh, done, uh, which says that if you've got uh, criteria of fever, non-weight bearing, high ESR and white cell count, which are all positive in this case. And the chances of him having uh, septic arthritis is very high. So even if it is not available, uh, I would like to take this child to theater and I would like to uh, wash this uh, hip joint. And that, that, that's, that's a very good pass for a candidate uh, to say. Uh, uh, even if we say that I've done hip aspiration under fluoroscopy and sometimes you can't aspirate uh, the joint, I might throw that in as, uh, uh, as a complexity for him. And I would again expect that with that such high incidence, uh, I, I, I would absolutely, I would uh, like to wash this hip joint, uh, even if I don't get maybe the pus may be thick, I may not win the joint. Uh, so I would like to uh, wash this hip joint and that's pass. And very rarely you would at this stage, uh, which is a borderline. I will not advise this candidate that uh, they say that we will wait for ultrasound, but no, I think uh, there's enough criteria for him to wash this hip joint. We would like him to know, has he ever done a hip joint washout? So we will say what uh, approach you use it. And we would uh, normally would expect him to say smith Peterson approach and, we, and he can do anterolateral approach if we want to, but standard is smith Peterson. If we tell him to describe the smith Peterson approach, he should be able to describe the superficial and deep layer of sartorius and tensor facial letter and deep practice memories and gluteus medius. He should, uh, if he has done this, he should uh, know that this is not the same extensile approach which you use for hip replacement. This is a much smaller version of it. Normally, you don't need to uh, reflect or cut the rectus from the 
uh, as soon as you are in a deeper layer, capsule is bulging uh, and you just uh, separate the reptile immediately uh, and you can just uh, make a nick in the capsule and the pus will gush out. Normally you're expected to remove a bit of a uh, capsule, give it a thorough wash. Uh, a lot of people would like to put a drain in and then uh, uh, normally muscle just fall, you can close deep fish and skin and that's good enough. Uh, uh, he should able to tell that in this approach, uh, two important structure uh, are to risk our lateral cutaneous uh, branch of the femoral nerve and the lateral uh, femoral circum circumflex artery branches which can come here and they should be aware of that these come, can come into, the, uh, into our approach. Uh, okay, we'll say you've done this uh, wash up the, the hip, you put